Good morning. Uh oh, does my video look right to you guys? It looks weird on mine. I think the aspect ratio isn't right. Uh, let's see. Oh boy. Let's see if we can fix this. There we go. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tea Time with Tynan number six. I uh, apologize, my hair looks ridiculous today. It's because I went swimming right before I went to uh, bed and then I didn't wake up in time to fix it. So, sorry. Also, I had some technical difficulties. Uh, I'm trying a new camera setup, so it should look better today, I hope. Um, look, now it can focus, see? You can see me in focus, and then if I hold it, will it focus? Look at that. Finally got it. Um, man, good to see you guys. Uh, today I'm going to have to cut it a little bit short because I'm going to a hockey game for the first time since I was a kid. The uh, Golden Knights here in Vegas are in the playoffs, and one of my friends is a big fan and he has an extra ticket. So I've got about an hour 15, and then we're going to go do that. Today I'm drinking Phoenix Honey Orchid. It's like a Phoenix oolong, but uh, prepared like a black tea. I got it a couple of years ago from Rishi Garden Direct, and this is my last serving of it. I had a ton of it. It was so good that I bought like two or three bags, uh, and I've been sort of saving this last one. We're gonna have it today. Man, good to see the regulars. What's up, Mark? From Barcelona, oh man, Pumpkin Gaba 2018. I remember that one, that's amazing. Fatima, of course, great to see you. Got your email, sorry I haven't had time to reply and like really analyze it, but I read it over. Cool that you sent that. Michael, good morning. English breakfast makes sense. I actually don't really even know what English breakfast is, to be honest. I think it's just like, I think it's like a British black tea blend from India. Not really sure. The Bitcoin Cash podcast. Maybe you can tell me why I should care about Bitcoin Cash. Uh, all, all these like forks kind of seem like they're going to go to zero someday. I don't know. What's up, Dave? What's up, Hassan? Cool. Great to see all the regular people. All right, let me pour myself some tea here. I actually have to make it hotter. Oh, you know, actually, I bet the popping sounds might be that this cord. Oh. Marher says, video looks good, but there's small popping sounds. Oh, there's still popping sounds. Okay, it might be because the microphone cable is like right on my hand. Let me fix that, hang on. Let's see. I'll just try to adjust some settings here. All right, are there popping sounds now? Can we? If you hear popping sounds, just say popping. I'll get a new microphone or something if this one doesn't work. This one, somebody gave it to me for free. All right, Bitcoin Cash is saying to check out his channel. I'm gonna check it out later. I appreciate you showing up. Uh, I am, I'm so skeptical, but we'll see. Uh, I think that, I don't, I don't think you want me as a guest because I just think Ethereum is gonna beat everything. Like uh, Bitcoin's been going down this week and I'm psyched about it. Uh, John P. Kukicha. I've got a big bag of it right over there. I almost drank Kukicha this morning. Kukicha is just like one of my favorites. All right, let me pour myself some tea here. So today's loose topic or topic for the beginning or whatever is going to be about buying things. Um, that's what my blog post was about this week, and I'm going to try to like match up these things with my blog posts, uh, sometimes at least. So if you have any questions about buying things, researching buying things, uh, what you should buy, being a minimalist, stuff like that, um, let's talk about it. Maybe if anybody even has some uh, something they're thinking about buying or they're researching, we could talk about it or something like that too. Or we can just talk about crypto like we always do. I wouldn't drink tea at 7 p.m. either. It's too late for me. Uh, sometimes I get rooibos tea or peppermint tea, which isn't really tea. There's no caffeine or anything like that. Uh, and I drink that when it's late, but too late for caffeine. Mm. 
this kind of plant, it, it's called a banana plant. It's obviously not really bananas, but uh, it's just these like, they look like tiny little bananas. Uh, my wife and I bought these things and uh, they both immediately died. And now they like, it seems to be doing better. Our new house has a lot more light, so everything seems to be doing better. Ah, still some popping. Dang it. That's annoying. Uh, let me try switching to my laptop mic and we'll set, I know this is like not very professional, but echo cancellation on. All right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try some stuff here. Let's see what. All right, I'm back. I had to reset the uh, had to reset the page. Does that is that better? Let me know. If it's not, then I'm just gonna mess with it uh, some other time. And I'll, I'll try to get it fixed. Thanks. Maybe you can send me a reminder to fix my echo. I, all these things come up during the podcast, and then I just forget about them at the end. Um, so sorry about that. All right. Let's see. All right. We're going to talk about this van here. Let's talk about the van. So your mate is thinking about buying a van. Where are you? Australia or something like that? Um, it seems like that would be a good place for a van. That's why I ask. Um, Gonna let him do it. Yeah, yeah. So the tiniest mansion I wrote, uh, the tiniest mansion I wrote, literally because a friend was buying a van, and so I, on a flight to New York and back, the return, I wrote the entire book. It's not like a super well written book, but it was just like all the information that uh, I thought I would need. So yeah, I would uh, definitely do the definitely do the van. I think the biggest mistake I see people make is that they they don't really understand electricity. And so they're like, oh, I'm going to do an air conditioner. I'm going to have a water boiler. And there's all these things that you just like can't really power off solar. I don't think people realize how much power different things take. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest mistake uh, people make there. What I like about buying a van is that it's funny. We just filled up the bird feeder with seeds. And now there's like all these little birds by the window. Um, what I like about buying a van, if you're going to live in it, which is, I, assume, I assume is the situation, um, it's it's one of those no lose situations where as long as you live in it for like three months, you've saved so much money that you could just sell the thing and still have, you know, save money versus renting an apartment. So that's something I always look for in buying situations is where there's this like almost no downside, but then if he does like it, maybe he lives there for years like I did. Um, and so there's like this unlimited upside. Like I calculated it once and I saved $144,000 living in my RV and it, you know, it didn't really feel like a, a compromise or struggle. I loved living in that RV. And now I don't, I think I mentioned it on a different one. Now it's uh, less than half a mile away from me, which is kind of cool. I bought woolen prints and completed the hundred challenge after that. Now 120 wears in the anti wrinkle properties and softness has gone to 50% more. Huh? That, that could be based on what you're washing it with. Um, it's really important to not use fabric softener. I just wash mine, uh, like shampoo is actually good because wool is, is kind of close. It is hair, I guess. Um, or actually, I guess now I don't even know what I wash it with because my wife doesn't. Um, yeah. I, I wear mine probably about probably three to 400 times before I, before I, um, replace it. Still just as soft, still just as anti-wrinkle. I mean, you can tell it was just wrinkled at the foot of my bed last night. Uh, it does get faded, so you can see like, if you look, see how like the inside is darker than the outside. Uh, that's the only thing I found on wool, wool prints. Man, really sorry about the popping. I'll, f I'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah, any other information, like, okay. Oh, that maybe that was before I rebooted. Okay, cool. Let's see. Fatima says it's better. Oh, Mar Harris says it's still popping. Thing. Okay. Look at that. I got that Australian vibe, right? Uh, UK is probably a cool place for it too. I, I, uh, um, I have a lot of friends in the UK. I have a couple of really good friends in the UK. And one of them actually is building a van right now, like this custom sprinter. And it sort of came out of nowhere. Uh, I'm not, I don't really even understand why she's doing it, but she's going hardcore about it, like putting in windows and stuff like that. Um, 
Yeah, great question, actually. How should I pronounce your name? At R-E-F. At R-F. I'm not sure. F. Uh, I put a lot of thought into this. So, yeah, the water boiler is actually a really good example. Uh, there's only a few that say that they work in different regions, and I suspect the other ones might, but they may also just light on fire or something like that. And so I don't want to, especially being in somewhere that has 120, uh, I don't I don't want to buy it and then pack it and then get more with 240 and have it break. Um, so I do consider that. Uh, almost everything now can run on 120 and 240. For example, any laptops, chargers, stuff like that. Um, it's really only the, the thing you mentioned, the water boiler, I think is the only one that uh, really doesn't work in other regions. So yeah, definitely something I think about. What's up, Zach? Thanks for joining. Sort of have a podcast. So basically, Nicholas, hello, by the way. Wait, I know you, I think. Don't I? Wait, I think I do. Dang it, I forget where I know you from. Um, yeah, so it's every week, I, you know, every morning throughout the week, I have tea just at my desk. Um, so now once per week, when it's convenient, like when I'm in Vegas, uh, I do my tea live so I can answer questions, talk about what the blog post was, stuff like that. Sometimes I have guests on, uh, so just for, just for fun. Yeah, it seems, seems like a cool thing to do. I, I, I can't really see a way that that goes wrong in the end. You know, everybody says this and uh, yeah, I get it. Like there, there are definitely, um, there are some things that are easier as guys, but, um, I, I anybody can do it. I, I know, I know women who do it. I mean, my wife travels with the same backpack I travel with, uh, I've known other women who do it. I find that it's, it's just a hard thing in general. And oftentimes people are like, oh, it's hard because of this, or it's hard because of this, but it's, you can, you can make it work. Um, with being minimalist gets tougher with two kids. I get it. Uh, I, I, my friend Leo Babata has six kids and he travels also with one backpack with all of his kids. He gives them little backpacks they have to wear. I think he carries some of their stuff too. Um, you know, it's, I, I would say it's doable and also it just kind of doesn't matter. Like don't be min minimalist just for being, for the sake of being minimalist, you know, in, in general, I think the idea is. Um, or at least for me, the idea is that if you buy something, make sure it's something that adds value to your life. Um, because by default, things take away value. Like for example, behind this camera in the corner, I have the last few things from when we moved from the old house. That obviously is not that valuable to me and it's just sort of sitting there and I look at it and it clutters up the place. So, you know, I, I, like the whole like, I only have a hundred items thing or whatever. I don't really get into that, um, but but yeah, I, I think, you know, there are different versions of being a minimalist and the cores have things that matter to you and, and not much else. Maybe from the podcast two weeks ago. Uh, I think I was on a podcast a couple weeks ago or live stream, yeah. Um, what's your decision process for upgrading your equipment? For example, when to get a new laptop? Um, yeah, good question. I, I don't think I have like a super concrete process on it. There's certain stuff that like little things like power adapters that I use every single day and are cheap. If I find one that's even one ounce or half an ounce uh, lighter, I'll buy it. Or if it has one extra port or something like that. Uh, my laptop right now, I have a super old laptop because I think mine was like the seventh generation. Then the eighth generation came out and it was only marginally faster than mine. So I just didn't want to deal with the hassle of moving. And then the ninth generation came out and I was waiting for it to get cheap in Japan. And then it did, well, it actually kind of never did, but I finally was just like, all right, it's twice as fast as mine. I need this new laptop. And then COVID happened, so I couldn't go pick it up. So uh, my good friend Todd is coming to visit in Vegas from Japan this month, and I'll probably upgrade then. Um, so I'd say it, it varies, you know, just based on items. I try to make sure that I'm upgrading for a reason, and I know what that reason is rather than just, oh, there's a new version out. So for example, phones, once in a while I skip a generation if I don't really feel like there's been much of an improvement. Um, I'd say what gets me these days for phones is the uh, cameras now, you know, because I do use cameras for my blog and for memories or whatever. Um, 
so if a camera is much better, like the one that I have now has a, like, uh, it can zoom up to like 50x and up to 20 is actually pretty good. So for me, that was worth it. And I'm actually, uh, in August, I'm going to upgrade to the Z Fold 3, which is the phone that's like this, and then it opens to basically be a tablet. I saw a guy with one, my Uber driver in Maui a couple weeks ago had one, and he was just raving about it for the whole 30 minute uh, ride. And then he let me play with it, and it was so cool. Um, that now I'm sold. So the new one's about to come out. I think I'm going to get that. What would you buy for work productivity? Uh, for travel, nothing. Just a really good laptop. Um, for me, the best laptops by like a huge margin are the Lenovo ThinkPads. I like to get the Japanese ones because they have extra keys on them. Um, and I remap those to be different things. Uh, however, actually, I just got the U.S. keyboard for my desktop, and I'm sort of getting used to it, so maybe I don't need to do that anymore. I'm not sure. Um, uh, if you're at home, get a huge monitor. I think, like, my monitor is so big that people laugh when they see my, uh, see my, my, uh, my office. It's like 49-inch triple widescreen. Uh, it's kind of a ripoff, honestly. I, I don't think I would buy that one again. It's cool, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, the best thing to do is to buy like 43 or to 49 foot, just regular or inch, not foot, one like this um, for a few hundred bucks. I find it actually makes a big difference for productivity that you can just have, you know, different windows next to each other and not have to uh, keep going back and forth. Yeah, still no shampoo. I haven't used shampoo or soap except for like washing my hands. Or like once, actually once in a while, like my feet got really dirty or something that I use soap. Uh, for maybe six years now, I don't know. I don't have such a good, uh, yeah, I don't have such a good sense of time. But um, yeah, essentially the theory, because it sounds so weird to people, so if people haven't heard about it. The theory is that essentially what you're doing when you're washing your hair with shampoo and conditioner is that you're stripping away all the oils and then you're sort of adding back in sort of like synthetic oils. If you just stop using shampoo, like think about how every animal looks good and they don't use shampoo. Um, for about a month or so, your uh, hair gets gross, like really gross, because your hair is like overcompensating and producing a lot of oil. After a while, it becomes totally normal. Um, and it's just yeah, super convenient. You just, I just use really hot water and just kind of do, one, do one of those. Um, Yeah, um, I never locked up my laptop. I actually had my RV broken into before and they didn't steal. This was crazy. So somebody climbed on the roof of my RV and it had a dome. I don't think they were intending to break in. I think they were just like homeless people trying to get somewhere else because I was near this ledge. It has this plastic dome. They fell through the dome and were in my RV and like I had credit cards, I had cash, I had like of David Cho painting, which is like one of my prized possessions, just hanging right there. All this valuable stuff. I think I had my Rolex there and they didn't steal any of it. And they even found like some wood and put it over the top to try to make the rain not get in. It was still pretty insane when I got home after the trip and I like my RV is like, has shattered stuff everywhere. Um, anyway, so I never had any real problems. Uh, I did have a safe that I bolted into the bottom of a closet. And I actually don't know if I ever used it for anything, to be honest. I think I must have had like, I think I had some cash in there, like some, something like that. Um, uh, so Bitcoin Cash pro Project Podcast. Hey, what, what's your name, by the way, so I can call you by your name? Uh, how do you, he's basically asking how do you get rid of, how do you get rid of gear? Um, it depends. It depends on your financial situation. Back when I had less money, I would sell everything for the maximum possible dollar. I mean, I was like on Craigslist, I was on eBay, I was hustling. These days I care a lot less. And so actually I just try to give stuff away if I can. Um, just like friends or family, like actually right over there, I have this uh, Samsung frame TV that I was so excited about. And it's cool, but I feel like I can make a better one. So now I'm just gonna give it away to my sister because I feel like she can get the value out of it, out of it and you know, there's no transaction fees or anything and, and I can just 
you know, I don't really need that, you know, the money and the hassle to sell it anymore. Good question. I mean, I guess it's not about buying, but I like the question, so I'm answering it anyway. Uh, when or how did you start working for yourself? Did you have a plan? I had almost no plan. Uh, I mean, I started, it depends how you want to say I started. When I was in high school, I bought this, uh, a kid in my class wanted to sell an Apple Newton, which is like the precursor to the Palm Pilots, which were the precursors to smartphones. And it was this Apple product that was sort of like this tablet, like a little tablet like this. And I was just super into computers and stuff, so I wanted to buy this thing. So I bought it from him for 130 bucks. And it was clear, which was interesting, because I had seen them being black before, but I'd never seen a clear one. And so I looked it up, and it turns out that the clear ones were extremely valuable. They were worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Probably now they're worth like thousands, I bet. Um, and so I got into this like hustle where I was like, okay, I'm gonna sell this for a black version of like the newest Palm Pilot. And so I did that. And then with that one, I like traded it for a laptop and then I sold the laptop. And with that, I bought two new Palm Pilots or something like that. So I had this like little business of selling Palm Pilots and, uh, and Apple Newtons and I think laptops at some point. Um, and then, so that's kind of how I like got a little bit of money, made a few thousand dollars off that, which was a, a lot of money for me back then. And then I went to college and I got into professional gambling and it got to the point where school was the limiting factor, where the time and effort it took to take school was uh, impeding me making money gambling, so I dropped out of school for that. Um, and I guess I had a couple, I had it like, I worked for a company once very briefly in Austin. Uh, I tried to quit, he wouldn't let me quit, and then he fired me the next week, so that, that didn't last. Um, but I guess, I don't know, that's sort of a long-winded answer, but I always knew that I was not going to end up at a real job. I actually visiting Hawaii, Hilo, Hawaii, where we have a place now. Uh, it was so nice there that I remember thinking I would rather be homeless and live in Hawaii than have a real job and give up all my time. And uh, that sort of it, I, like literally, I thought about that Hawaii moment for like decades, probably or, yeah, probably a couple decades after, where I'd be like, yeah, well, I'd rather be homeless, so I'll just keep trying to do my own thing. Awesome, Arher. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, I, I, you know, my friends and I are all kind of frugal and we like, like researching products and stuff like that. So I always think this stuff is normal. And then I go see people just like go buy brand new phones from like Apple or T-Mobile or whatever. Or, like go buy a brand new car from the dealership and trade in their old one. And like, I'm like, wow, people, you know, I think like for every hundred thousand dollars I spend, I probably get like two or three hundred thousand dollars of value just because that's what I do. Uh, it's actually funny, so my, my sister is a, is a professional uh, interior designer, and so she's been helping us with our house here. And she asked me, she said, okay, you know, you need couches. How much money do you want to spend on couches? And I said, well, you know, I've only, the most expensive couch I've ever bought in my life is $300. I really love that couch. So, you know, but, you know, it's a new house. I'm going to live here a long time. I have more money now. I want to spend, you know, I'll, I'll spend a normal amount on a couch. She said, okay, so like is $6,000 per couch okay? And I was like, are you kidding me? I didn't know couches could be so expensive. So we finally compromised and bought couches for like 2,000 each, which is frankly in, in, insane for me. Um, and I had to pay retail for them. There was like no discounts, no like, like you had to pay for shipping. And I was talking to her about it and I was like hemming and hawing for like a few days, which is weird because most life decisions I make pretty quickly. And I was like, I just talked to her and I said, yeah, you know, the problem is that I've never paid retail for anything to me, uh, for anything. And it feels so unnatural that I just like don't know what to do about it. So finally I did it, but they still haven't come. So I don't know if it was worth it or not. Uh, let's see. Ooh, lots of questions coming in here. What's up, David? Uh, experimenting with fasting, have you tried it? I, I do intermittent fasting uh, generally. Well, actually, I, I changed it just this, this week, but usually I only eat, I would have nuts at 4 p.m. Like, like I actually bought a little airline dish so I could pretend I'm in first class every day. Uh, airline nuts at 4, I heat them up in the, uh, in the little toaster oven. And then at about 6, I have my Chipotle and that's it. 
Uh, sometimes I'll have some fruit later on too. Uh, so I do intermittent fasting. I've never done like real hardcore fasting. Uh, I, I do suspect it could be worth doing though. Um, I, I just don't know enough about it to really have a, a good a good opinion. What's up, Jeremy? I'll, I'll try to remember that. Yeah, look at all these people who are not, look at all these people uh, not using shampoo. That's awesome. Whoa, we met in Sydney. Cool. At, at the, the meetup with Leo, I imagine? Is that, oh, that's so cool. I'll have to tell him about that. Um, nice. Dude, I'm excited for you. It's one of those posts where I'm like, ah, like how many people are really going to go to Hilo? So I try to make it just fun to read or interesting in general. But actually, I've heard from a few people going to Hilo to try it. Uh, definitely when you go to Poke Market or Kula Shave Ice, uh, tell them I say ahe. I don't, I don't know all the employees of both of them, but, but I know a lot of them. Dieter, how's it going, man? Thank you so much for the cookies. I like So Dieter's uh, daughter has a business called Cookie Mama, and he sent or she sent some to Noah when I was visiting him, and we ate like an embarrassing amount of cookies in a few days. They were like, every, every once in a while, I'd be like, you know, we should, do, let's just eat one more before we go. And then we're doing a podcast, like, well, let's just eat one for the podcast. And then all of a sudden they were gone. Um, and then we had these other friends come over and literally in my mind, I'm like, okay, like how can we hide these so that his friends don't find the cookies? They're really like some of the best cookies I've ever had. Uh, so Dieter just sent me a bunch of them, way more than I thought he was going to send me. So they're in the fridge and I eat one per day. Um, and I really look forward to it. That's right. I just said that I'm only, I only eat the nuts and the chipotle, but now actually after my chipotle, I eat, uh, I eat one cookie. They're so good. Uh, Cookie Mama. I, actually, you know, I meant to make a little banner that I could put on here kind of as a joke, but I forgot. Um, what kind of digital products do you buy most? Uh, I buy ebooks. I buy, sub like, subscribe to software as a service, which I think was like a hard transition for me because, you know, I grew up with computers and it was always like you buy software once, you don't have to pay, keep paying for it. Um, but like the, the software I use for this to be able to put the comments up on the screen is called StreamYard, so I pay for that. Uh, Noah actually uses that. That's where I've heard about that one. Um, do I pay for any other digital things? I feel like recently, you know, I've got a couple servers that I run, so I have to pay hosting fees. Uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I try not to pay for, I, I try to keep recurring costs low or be things that I'm like actively using because otherwise, uh, you know, you can pay for these things forever. I once, uh, I signed up for Equinox Gym when I lived in LA, very expensive gym for people who don't know, and didn't really go very much. And then years later when I was in SF, I was looking for a gym to join. And so we go to Equinox and they're kind of like, it's like this big fancy one, so they take your name and they give you a tour and all this kind of stuff. And we're doing this tour and he goes, oh yeah, I see here, Tynan, that you've had, a, you've been a member with us before. That's great. Uh, you know, I wonder what your experience was with that. Yeah, it looks like you know you, you were a member for a year and a half, and uh, oh, you came twice, <laughs> and it's really true. So I spent like thousands of dollars on the stupid gym that I used twice. So I try to make sure that I'm, I'm actively using using it if I do it. Um, let's see. Yeah, I have gotten to DeFi farming, so. Uh, it's like one of these things I don't talk about much because I don't think I know enough about it to really tell other people whether they should do it or not. Um, and I do like the safest ones, or the ones that I think are the safest, safest ones. Um, so I, I stake my Ethereum on my server. I have some other Ethereum that I put in the Yearn Curve Staked ETH Vault, CRV STETH. Uh, that might be it. Is that all I do? I think that's all I do now. Yeah. So I'm not like hardcore into it, um, but but yeah, it's, it's crazy to, to be able to make interest on these things. I started consistently spending money on coaching. It's made a big life just way easier. Uh, yeah, so obviously I'm a coach. Or I don't know if I am or was. I don't really take new people, but I, I do still have some people from, from before who I really like. Um, so I, I've never had a formal coach. I feel like all my friends are sort of like my informal coaches. Like, uh, you know, if I'm like working on some habit thing, maybe I ask my friend Leo or, or you know, or if, uh, if it's a business thing, I always ask Noah or, 
maybe Derek Sivers or something like that. So I feel like I'm just very fortunate that all my friends are the sorts of people I would want to hire as coaches. And, you know, we sort of have that kind of relationship where we, we're always giving each other advice, basically. Um, as far as being a coach, uh, my, I, don't know, I, have a lot, I have a lot of them. I, th I think a lot of them are about like people having goals that they think are unreachable. And then they reach them like in a few months or something like that. Like this one guy, I actually think he came on here once. Uh, he was, he wanted to write a book and he'd been like trying to write it for years. And so we like set up some, some habits and he, like, after three months, he's like, well, I guess I don't need coaching. That was my goal, goal and the book's done now. Uh, another one of my oldest coaching clients uh, uh, just sold her business for really a lot of money. Um, and obviously that's 99.999% her hard work, but there was a period of time where she was trying to quit her business and I like sort of forcefully made her keep doing it. Um, yeah, so I, 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 re I really liked it, to do it. Noah! My brother from Hawaii, Shaka's. I go to Noah's all the time. He's the reason that I do this. Very cool to see him. What's up, brother? Guess what we're talking about? Crypto like usual. <laughs> oh, and we're talking about the cookies too. I was just talking about how we had those cookies together. And now, I, I don't know if I told you yet, but Dieter sent me so many of them. It must be like three dozen or something. Uh, Dave, trick for Poke Market is uh, if you call early and tell them what you're going to get, they'll set it aside for you. That's what I do too. Uh, looking to work for yourself, any tips or recommendations, programmer, underrated business to get into? Uh, I think I would probably get into, um, I would get into some sort of blockchain coding sort of stuff. I think it's so obviously the future um, that I would do that. I think if you have, it, it sort of depends on your financial situation. If you don't have a lot of money, I would actually probably recommend you just take a job. It's probably the easiest path because as a programmer, you can really make so much money. Um, and then I would just save up enough that you can live comfortably off like the interest. It's so easy to get like eight or 9% these days um, that, you know, probably in two years you could save up enough that you could like live, you know, an inexpensive but comfortable lifestyle. And then you can just go crazy making your own thing. Uh, if you're already at that state, I think I would say do something that matters to you or something you really care about. Um, or just or just do blockchain because it's probably the future. You should actually just ask Noah. He'll have better advice. I don't think I have that good advice about work because I just sort of do whatever I want to do and uh, then try to like half-ass make it pay. Uh, you know, it's worked okay, but I think I've made, I think I'm better at investing and managing money than I am at earning money personally. Yeah, it was like magic, right? <laughs> I mentioned the cookies and Noah's, Noah's here for the cookies. That's hilarious. Yeah, Dave, good question. I, I, I've never made the mental leap of paying for coaching. Intellectually, I understand the value. Uh, I don't know. Like, I totally agree with you. I think it would be hard for me, too. In fact, when I got into pickup, that was a thing where, like, everybody who got good just paid for workshops from people that were good, and then they learned from them. And I had this, like, weird, stubborn thing where I was like, well, I don't need that. I'm going to learn by myself. And I went, and I did. I mean, I lived with these guys, and they all taught me, and it was essentially like getting, you know, a free workshop for a year. And then I got good enough that I started training other people with them. And I saw the transformations that people had. And I remember like, I remember the first workshop I ever helped mystery with the guys show up and they're all these like turbo nerds, like way nerdier than I felt like I was, although it really was probably about the same. And I thought, Oh my God, we are scam artists. Like we've told these people that they're going to have good results, that they have any chance. And they definitely don't because they're so nerdy. There's no hope for these people. I'm like, well, I'm gonna do my best, try to give them a good experience, but this is probably the last time I'm doing this. I think we're scamming people. And they all got so much better during that weekend that I was like, oh, I should have signed up for this like a year ago. Um, I think the challenge though with, with coaching, so what I've found in, in terms of me coaching people is that I think it's not that good of a value if you do like one or two. I think it's like, okay, but it's pretty expensive. Uh, like whenever people only last for a few, I'm like, ah, I feel like that wasn't that good of a value for them. When they stay for a year though, and I'm like, oh, they paid me $6,000 this year, their life is way better, like way more than $6,000 better because of how I've influenced them. At least that's my perception and the feedback I get. Um, so I think it, it is a leap of faith. I think, I think it's hard. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. 
Yeah. So Noah and I both like Rolexes. And in fact, he just, bought, he probably doesn't mind me saying this, right? He bought a pretty fancy Rolex that is going to be his reward for a certain milestone that he's going to hit. But it's a hard one to find, so he had to buy it in advance. So he's shipping it to me. So actually, maybe I won't be here next. Uh, will I be here next week? I'll be here next week. Next week, I'm going to wear Noah's Rolex. It's going to be fun. Uh, kind of cool. Let's see. Bro brother. I, you know, I've got some in the fridge for you. Come on over to Vegas. I'll even let you look at your watch. David. What's up, David? I was on David's uh, podcast. He has a really good podcast. He lives... I don't know if he still does. He lives in Colombia, though. Really cool guy. Uh, good podcast. Let's see. All right. Don't tell my wife. Um, let's see. Uh, so much stuff to s scroll through here. Uh, look at this. Noah's totally taking over my podcast, that, over my thing. That's good, though. I owe it all to him. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, David's in Columbia. Man, such a... This is, this is what I like about these sorts of things. Like, I feel like when I have meetups or when I have these video things, I feel like it's like only champions who show up. I really like the people who show up. Hmm. All right. Any other questions? Nice. Thanks, man. Glad to hear that. Yeah, it was really fun. You're a good interviewer. Uh, Noah, too. I really like being on Noah's as well. Um, dude, Noah and I have fancy lives. Noah just moved into a new house, too. I'm very excited. So Noah was really involved in me buying my house, and he was like so happy for me to get this house. And now uh, he got a house, so I'm so excited about, him, about his. And uh, I almost came this weekend to visit on the first weekend he had it. Uh, but I got to do taxes, so couldn't go, come this week, but in a few weeks I'm going to come. I cannot wait to see his house. <laughs> Stop encouraging people to rob me. If you rob Noah, 10% this way. I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, I, I've got his address. I'm going to email it privately to everybody. I'm going to scope it out when I visit, let you know where the weak points are in the security. It's going to be good. Personally, buying coaching helps me stay consistent and invested. My coach has seen so many people in the same spot. That's true. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I, what, what I find is that, you know, for all of us, consistency matters so much. And I found that, uh, so here's a, here's a good example. And I'm going to try to, let's see, how can I, I'm going to obfuscate it a little bit to not embarrass anybody. But I, so I had a friend and a coaching client who were working on the exact same measurable goal. And just by coincidence, they'd sort of started at the same level and they were following the exact same track. Friend didn't have coaching, obviously my, my coach person did. And what was interesting is they, around the same time, it wasn't the exact same month, but, but around the same time, they both fell off the wagon. And I tried to encourage both of them to get back on. But there's a different dynamic with my friend because it's like, there are other factors, right? I have to like maintain the friendship over everything. And they fell off and they went totally back to where they started. And the, uh, the one that I coach is now in like an amazing spot um, and basically doesn't have to worry about that thing anymore. So I do think there are times when like, like there's some months when it's like just a check in and probably there's really not that much value. But knowing that they're there for when something like that happens uh, can be the big value. And yeah, I also think about people being in the same spot. Uh, a lot of the people I get are people who want to like quit their job or go remote or be a nomad or something like that. And like I get it because I've been there too and, and these situations when you're in them you're like I've, it's total uncharted territory but in my situation it's like well every single one of my friends and all of like my coaching clients are not all but a lot of them have been there so I know what the waypoints look like so I do think that's a, a way to help um, that's true too I've, I've tried to give away coaching to a few people and, and it, it never sticks Skeptical about the long-term future of crypto because I expect very high resistance. Uh, yeah, I, so yeah, definitely a possible a possibility. Uh, however, I think we've sort of passed that point. I think we've passed the point and I think crypto is now strong enough that it would survive anyway. Um, I also think the government is just gonna have to embrace it. It doesn't mean there won't be challenges. I think there could be, um, but I, I think we're past that point. Could be wrong, we'll see. Um, I know it is like wrapping tacos, right? Dude, I could, I could go for a taco. Uh, let's see. What big project you're working on? What excites you these days? Um, yeah, definitely like in transition these days. I, 
to be honest. Um, so we bought this house that we have to remodel everything. Uh, so what I'm really excited about, and this isn't a big project necessarily, but in a week, my dad's coming here and we're going to build an outdoor steam room and sauna. So two buildings are connected. Uh, so I'm, I've always wanted to have a steam room. It's my favorite, like one of these things. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited about getting more of my friends to move into this neighborhood. I'm excited about traveling again. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's, I, I feel like my motivations, you know, just in the past year have shifted a lot to where I don't really care about making money anymore. And I didn't realize how much that factored into me wanting to do some of the projects I wanted to do. So I'm definitely losing motivation on some projects. Um, I'm really excited about it, but it also some of them, it makes me realize that I really love the project. So for example, my in-person events, I love doing so much that I, I want to do more of them, even though the money is not necessarily a, a driving factor anymore. Um, but maybe some of like the programming stuff, I'm a little bit burnt out on or don't want to do. Um, so I don't know. Taxes are better than France. Believe me, they're not. I thought about even trying to do them from over there, but... Yeah. Anyway, I can't wait to visit your new place, man. Super excited. Oh, this is going to be a good one. All right. Read your posts on EV. Find it difficult to use in certain situations. Thinking about switching jobs from bad job, with, but with nice friends to a better job, working alone might enjoy it as much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I have a lot of thoughts on that. So I think that the the skill of using EV is is a lot about doing these fuzzy math sort of things, um, because those are the ones where it's a little bit less obvious. So something I would be thinking about here is, can you make that bad job better? And can you spend time with friends if you work alone? Um, and then I would just be sort of waiting, like, you know, how much, how, how bad is the job? Is it like a negative 10? In which case you should probably quit. Is it a negative one? Is there another job that you can get that could have friends? Could you work with your friends? Um, so I would, I, I would just like try to think of these scenarios. I try to think out of the box instead of just like A or B, it's like, okay, if those are both like coming up to be about the same EV roughly, and neither one is that exciting to you, is there a third option? I mean, there is, there's always some third option. Um, so I'd be thinking about stuff like that. Uh, I would also be thinking about reversibility. So I'd say, okay, what if I work, if I work alone, can I go back to a job that's equivalent of this job or even maybe the same job? Um, if you can, then I would really bias myself towards trying the new one because oftentimes fear will make us underweight the other, the newer option that we're, that we're not familiar with. Um, so those are just some of the things I would be thinking about. Um, if you really do all the analysis and it's like just dead even, what that tends to mean is that it doesn't really matter because if one of them was a lot better, that E would, would emerge and it would show itself. So you could just kind of choose which one you want. Um, and in those cases, I usually bias myself towards change again because of that fear thing. <laughs> Where'd that go? Burgle time with Tynan. Let's go. We'll hit Noah first, and then if anybody else here has a lot of valuables, let me know. Nassim seems so smart, uh, but I, I hate his writing style. And it's probably just like me. It's not like anything with him, but I, I just find it a little bit pretentious. So I can't get through his books. Maybe, I don't know. People keep bringing him up. I should probably give it another try. We'll see. David, where were you a few years ago? I definitely wanted to sell you Bitcoin for 10K back then. Hyo's on X. Thanks for showing up, man. Or woman. Good to see you. Philip. Uh, good question. Hey, Tynan, what's up? I read your blog post where you encourage people to work hard 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Any updates? Do you still believe in working this hard? Um, so I don't work that hard now for sure. Um, what I would say is, um, I think it's important to have the capability to do that. Um, and a lot of why I got into it is because I knew that I, I had never done it before and I didn't know whether or not I had the capability to do it. And I think in your life, you need to have that experience because you just never know when you're going to have to work that hard. So for example, I have some semi-passive stuff like cruise sheet, my cruise business running. And I know that if it broke or if I needed to improve it in some way, I could shut everything down and I could work, you know, 12 hours a day. I think it's actually more than 12 hours a day. I think I was working like 14 back in the day, seven days a week. Um, I do still work seven days a week, but that's not really, I work on any given day, but once in a while I take a day off. 
Um, and I would say I don't do that much productive stuff these days or towards big projects. So I think it's really important. I think that like if you aren't at the point where you have enough money that you could support your lifestyle off of investments, you need to think about like what's important and probably building up some sort of nest egg is, is important. Um, so it really just depends. I don't think it's like a blanket prescription that everybody should be doing that all the time. But I do think that you should have that capability and you should exercise it, if that makes sense. I don't know if that really answers your question, but if it doesn't, you could ask me. Um, definite retreat. I can't wait. Maybe I'll even do a tea time, a sauna time with Tynan. I don't know if anybody wants to see me uh, videoing while I'm like sweating in the sauna, like breathing heavy, but maybe. Uh, yeah, EV. Oh, damn, so many of these things. Thank you, brother. I think he's a smart guy, but yeah, his 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 writing, man, just drives me nuts. Uh, man, so fun to have Noah here. Now I know how you feel when I go on yours. Uh, let's see. StreamYard scrolls weird. Do you get that, Noah? I don't like how it scrolls. Um, great question. Uh, how much of the big events in your life were planned versus randomly happens? Pick up properties, blogging, meeting your wife, etc. Um, planned versus randomly happened. I think that the, the critical element in essentially all of them is that I'm willing to jump on things really, really quickly, even if they're outside the realm of what's normal. So, you know, pick up, I stumbled upon totally random. One of my gambling friends showed me a website about it. I learned about it through that and just sort of dabbled and like, you know, there's, it's definitely one of these things where you get worse and creepy before you get good and, you know, charismatic or whatever. Um, and I, I was in that, in that phase. And uh, then in terms of like, what, what actually got me good was living in LA with all of the best people in the world. And I was the least qualified person to do that. But the reason I got it was because I was the first. As soon as I saw the opportunity, I was in a private forum that I really had no business being in. And they said, hey, anybody in this forum can have the last bedroom. It's three grand a month. Just be the first to reply. And literally without thinking about anything else, I replied because of the EV, I was like, if I don't do this, I may regret it for the rest of my life. And I'll wonder what would have happened if I had. If I do do it, the potential upside is enormous. The potential downside is really not that big. So I jumped on it immediately and I moved in. And I actually met a lot of the other guys who, later on who were much more qualified and wanted to live there. And they were like, damn you, like I wanted that spot, but you got there first and it totally changed my life. Um, so I, I think I'm good at taking advantage of opportunities really. Uh, properties was the same thing. It was like a friend realized that islands were cheap in Canada. I think that was the first one we did. And so I just looked around and a week later we bought it or we sent a deposit. So I just jump on, I jump on things really quickly. Meeting my wife, same thing. Met on Tinder, very same day I texted her, or we met up. And then I met up with her the next two days because I knew she wasn't in Vegas for very long. And then I went and visited her in Houston. I feel like this makes me sound really creepy, but it was a mutual thing. Um, uh, and even that one, that was, that's a good example of coaching. I actually wasn't gonna meet her quickly in, uh, to go visit her. And my friend Todd, I told him about her. He's like, what are you doing? You definitely need to go see her soon because I was about to go on a trip. Um, still in the points game for sure. It's just, it's just too good of a value not to do. Um, you know, if it's something cheap, I just buy it with, t with, with cash. Um, and I have some tricks for that, but what, I, if I'm going like long haul or something or like some expensive one, I always try to use, um, points. Yeah. Still doing an annual gear review. Yep. Uh, and in fact, this year I'm pretty psyched um, for the, uh, tea time with Tyne and I'm gonna bring my bag on. Maybe I'll set up a table and like show you guys all this stuff. So I think that should be pretty fun. Yes, I do apply EV. I apply EV to everything I do. I mean, I was a professional gambler for a very long time. I was a poker player, semi-professional for a long time as well. Uh, and even pickup is a lot of EV in ways people don't realize. So it's just how I think about everything, probably to a fault, to to an annoying point. Uh, yeah, I always think about EV for everything. And and the the general formula for the general way I think about EV in particular Ethereum is that it could go to zero. I actually think that's pretty much impossible. I think it could maybe only go down 50% from where it is now. Uh, but, you know, add some, try to remove my bias. Maybe it's down, it could go down 75%. Uh, 
However, I think it's at least as likely that it goes up 10x. I actually think it's a lot more likely, again, trying to remove my own bias. So to me, it's just like a no-brainer. But again, you have to be okay with the downside. You know, With EV, you can't just say, oh, it's plus EV. I'm going to pretend the downside doesn't exist. You have to also consider how that would impact you. If that would make you homeless, for example, maybe that EV is actually negative like 1,000 because it's just so bad. Let's see. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Uh, oh, I just sneeze. Uh oh, I just sneeze. <coughs> All right. Uh, let's see. All right, skin in the game. I'm going to try it. Could somebody email me and tell me to? Uh, sorry, I don't mean to make people like my personal assistants, but I just want to remember it and I don't want to like take time off to type it. Um, skin in the game. I'm going to try it. That's good feedback. Thank you, Jeremy, right? I think that's your name. What's up, Charlotte? Thank you for joining. Oh, uh, Mar Hare is out of here. Oh, gosh, so many texts down. Okay. See you, Mar Hare. Dude, that's so true, right? I really do feel like we're underrated. <laughs> I also feel like we appeal to a certain type of person that's maybe, or you know, maybe not so mainstream. Do you still agree with the idea of how to change diet habits? You run your habits book, building for two years, then maintenance. Yep, I do. Um, now I, I sort of go between uh, about 150 and 170. So I'm like 154 right now, and I usually just try to stay on the low side of that. That's a succinct way of putting it. Asymmetric opportunities, exactly. It's actually a lot of women that show up for uh, both my and Noah's uh, office hours. Pretty awesome. I, I, like, I like that. <laughs> Whenever I'm writing, I assume it's only guys, which you know is fine. But I like I like guys too. But I'm like, oh, it's kind of too bad. Um, I find EV most useful. Yeah, it really does. It throws it into like sharp contrast for sure in that way. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a really good recommendation. I actually didn't read the whole thing. I started reading it and I was like, oh, I already think this way, so I don't need to. Uh, but Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. Uh, she's one of the most famous poker players, like real legend. Um, and actually, it turns out a very good writer. So her book is great. I, I would recommend that. Yeah, I love that idea. Uh, I actually have a friend who, his name's Kai Zhao, Z-A-U. I think it's only for friends. But he makes a little newsletter and he sends it like every few months and it's just like a distillation of the things that he's been enjoying. It's like, you know, maybe a photo or two of him and his wife and like, here's some books I read and here's like a weird thought I had. Uh, and it's like my, it's one of my favorite newsletters to get. I think it's a cool idea. Uh, so I don't know if, if learning, poker is I think the smartest game. I think it trains your brain in the, I mean, not that I, I know anything about a lot of games. But I think it trains your brain in a way that is extraordinarily useful for real life. Um, it mainly it's EV, it's dealing with, if you distill down what poker is, it's essentially taking a lot of bits of incomplete but important information and synthesizing it into a concrete quick decision, which is also sort of what life is about in a lot of ways. Um, so I think it's extremely valuable. However, I don't think you're gonna get good enough at it for it to be useful unless you play it regularly, uh, like in a casino against real people. It's, it's the kind of thing where like, you could sing in your shower and think that you're good, but it's different if you sing in front of a group. Um, and I think you just can't like harden the steel of your poker skills unless you're playing against other people. So I would say actually you probably don't learn about it unless you're gonna do that because it might just be a waste of time. Uh, probably that Annie Duke, probably you asked that after it, before I said that, but yeah, the Annie Duke book I think is, is a really good way to do it. Um, I think playing poker is an excellent way, though maybe not the 80-20 way, but it's also one of those things that it's so valuable that that I really do think it's worth, um, uh, yeah, I really do think it's like worth it if it's something that appeals to you. Charlotte, what are your life decisions? I want to hear about that. Um, <laughs> when you drink tea alone, how long does it take? Uh, what do you do while sipping tea? Hassan, you've got some good questions today. Um, I, I drink tea probably from about 10 or 11 a.m. to 4 or 5 p.m. But it's like the first few... Well, actually, this this I'm drinking slow because I'm talking so much. I, um, 
first few I kind of mostly drink. So I'll watch like YouTube videos. Shout out to Noah. I, I, he's always the first one I check, see if he has any new YouTube videos. I uh, follow the alcoholic, so I watch yacht reviews, a couple other little kind of in mini documentary kind of ones. Read Reddit, read Hacker News, read emails, think about what I'm going to do with my life <laughs> or my day. Um, like I'm doing taxes now, so maybe I'm reading about taxes a little bit. Uh, and then after that, I just sort of work or do whatever I'm going to do, and I'll just have tea once in a while. Uh, but it's 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 kind of funny because my friends and I always joke that like even like my brother now who's who's really I got him into tea. Uh, if we're gonna have tea and we only have an hour, we're like oh, it's like not nearly enough time to have tea, even though you know it's just like it's just a beverage. Uh, I'd say like yeah, probably a couple hours. What have it? Oh, that was a good. Damn, you guys have great questions today. I think I say this every week, but really, some great ones. Um, this is kind of why I don't like having topics because I feel like the random ones that people bring up are, are more interesting. I don't know. Uh, habit is generally underrated that has big upside. I think uh, being the first thing that comes to mind is being proactive in your social circle or building your social circle. Um, you know, I know rich people, I know poor people, and for sure, the happiest ones are the ones that have. I would say the best connections with their friends. Doesn't necessarily mean the most friends, but people who have like really strong, like meaningful co connections with their friends, I think are the happiest. Um, so I think that is probably the biggest upside. And I think it's something also that people don't think about. Um, you know, everybody's so focused on like productivity and making money that they sometimes overlook that. Um, and then I would also say just the habit, it's sort of a meta habit of like building consistent habits. Uh, I think people tend to go gung-ho on a habit and then it disappears and it turns out it did them no long-term good. Whereas if you have the habit of being consistent and just like doing the same thing, some little habit every single day for years on end, uh, it, it can really change your life. Cool. Nice. What's up, Phil? Let me see if I can recognize you. Uh, the image is too small. Can't really. That was fun. Was it the year that I, I spoke at South by Southwest? That was like a super fun time. I think it was, right? Because I think I brought a bunch of my books to give away. And my mom got to see me speak, which is, I think, the first time. That was pretty fun. What's up, Dave? Or see you later, Dave. Thanks for coming. Tips for buying tea with someone who's only into coffee and now getting into tea. Um, try Phoenix Oolong. Try Japanese Sencha. Um, make sure you brew it with... Get a Gaiwan, which actually I'm not using today. Do I have one nearby? No. Uh, get a Gaiwan and learn how to use it. And make sure you use the right temperature for the uh, for the water. Um, and, and maybe try drinking it with other people. I think a lot of the fun part of a lot of the nice thing about a lot of the benefits of tea are that it creates a really nice social atmosphere. Um, yeah, so I would I would try that. Oh, what is going on here? All right. Um, oh, dang! Another good question. What are processes you put in place to check in and stay grounded and humble? Nature from time to time, does that stem from your habit building? Yeah, um, so another big thing I think about is, I think unless you really appreciate everything you, ha you have in your life, you, you have, if you don't appreciate it, you have wasted your time getting it. So if all you're gonna do is get to the next level, whether it's in terms of you know friendships or money or living situation or traveling or whatever house you live in, whatever it is, if every time you get there, all you do is you look to the next one and you don't feel immensely grateful for what you have and more grateful than for the previous one, then you've just wasted your time and you shouldn't have gotten it anyway. Um, so I spend a lot of my time thinking about how incredibly lucky I am. Um, you know, which is, I don't mean lucky in, for I should say fortunate, right? Not not just like oh everything came totally by luck, although probably a lot of it did. Um, but I feel really grateful for for everything I have, and so I think constantly about what I'm grateful for. Like even sometimes at night when if I'm like having trouble sleeping, I'll just I'll like have my eyes closed, like yeah, what am I grateful for today? And I'll just start thinking like, well, I'm grateful for my wife and for my house and for the tea I get to drink and for this trip that I just got to go on and that my parents are alive and my grandparents are alive and like all this sort of stuff. Um, and then I think when I see people who are in situations I wouldn't want to be in, uh, I th even if it's, if it's a good situation for them, so it's not like I'm looking down on them, but like, I'll think like, wow, like 
I could have had a life where like I was a waiter or something like that. And it's nothing against waiters or thinking poorly about them. It just, you know, it's like, wow, I'm like really fortunate that like I get to be sitting at the table and this guy's bringing me food and I don't have to be the one bringing the food. Like that's insane because it's basically random luck that I got to be born to be this person who has this really fortunate life. Um, and I know, I guess maybe what keeps me <laughs> some degree of humble, I don't, maybe I'm not as humble as I could be, but, uh, what gives me some sense of humility is that I realize that there is a lot of luck and I could have just as easily been, you know, the person serving the food versus the person eating the food. Um, so yeah. Oh, here we go. I know I'm going to like this one. Uh, oh, okay. Water choice. <laughs> I thought I was going to get to convince somebody to move to Vegas. Um, I'm not worried about it. Uh, I guess part of it is that everywhere has something that you could worry about if you want to. And so I choose not to, uh, there are some fairly obvious solutions or not full solutions, but there's some fairly obvious things we should be doing. Uh, for example, I think it's Lake Powell is the one that's upstream from Lake Mead. It is, it has a porous bottom. So we lose a lot of that water. We should drain that and just fill Lake Mead up higher. Uh, also then there's more volume. The ratio of volume to surface area is a lot higher. So we'll have less evaporation, which is how we lose a lot of that water. Um, so there are like tough decisions that could be made that I think would be fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That was a weird talk, right? Instead of being on a stage, it was me and, and who was I with? I can't remember. It was me and another travel blogger and we were like in the middle and then there's like people all around. It's kind of weird. Um, Hey, Tyler, I found you four years ago in your Rialto videos when you were living in SF. You went back to that lifestyle would be, what vehicle would you pick now? I'd pick the Rialto still. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to look more, um, but I, I still think it's sort of the best one. It was so perfect. The only thing is now the engines are probably all getting old and have a lot of miles, and that would be a little bit weird. Um, a little bit worrisome. I don't like the Sprinter vans because they're so narrow. Uh, I think there may be some other vans or maybe some flared Sprinter vans, but the... In a van, the width matters more than you think. Like one extra foot in width really just changes how it feels on the inside. I know, are you gonna release it? I, I know, it never got off the line. I actually have some and I listen to them, but I feel like they're not quite good enough to put out. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something funny I've, I've, I've been thinking about recently. I feel like I shouldn't talk about these things unless I do them, but here's one. I thought about picking four kind of stupid missions and spending six months on each one. So for example, one of them is I want to invent a new food. I feel like people don't invent enough foods. They just keep remaking the old things. And I have a few ideas and I think I could invent like, this would be the best example, but like the cronut, right? That would be something I would invent, but like, it's like this new food that everybody went crazy for. I think I could invent a new food because I think that a lot of the foods that we have are very arbitrary combinations. Like, you know, wheat noodles or, you know, semolina noodles or whatever, plus tomato sauce. It's like so good, but it's just kind of random. So I think I could come up with some better, some new foods. So I thought about spending six months on that, six months on a rap track. Uh, I forget what else I was going to do, but yeah, just six months on like some random things like that. We'll see. I, I kind of don't think I'll do it though. Let's see. Oh, cool. We met in Budapest at Cup of Tea. I was working there. I was working there in ice hockey. Oh, I remember you. I thought you meant you were working at the shop in ice hockey. I remember you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, at Zhao Zhao, I think, right? Um, oh, man. I I look forward to just going to Zhao Zhao. I mean, that's, I feel like this may as well be sponsored by Zhao Zhao. But um, yeah, every day when I'm in Budapest, I go to a tea shop called Zhao Zhao. So I guess if you want to stalk me, that'd be the easy way. Um, I, I love the atmosphere there. I love the people who work there. Um, you know, I've become friends with them over the years. I love the location. I love the tea. I love their little snacks. Uh, yeah, I, I just can't wait. And even just like it's, you know, we live in the seventh district. So it's like we have to walk from, it, it's just a beautiful walk there. So that kind of gets you in the mood for tea. And then by the time you're done, you get to like have lunch at one of these great restaurants. So I really look forward to uh yeah, just to going back to Jojo more than anything. Um, let's see, how do you stay focused on tasks? The, the best way to learn how to do this is to 
force you is to work for like 15 minutes every single day remove all distractions just do that 15 minute task then after a few weeks move it up to 30 minutes then you know you have to build it like a muscle it's sort of like if somebody said like how do you lift 400 pounds it's like well first you lift 100 then you lift 125 then 150 etc um so yeah that, that that's how i would do it All right, guys, we have, uh, I've got about 10 minutes. Let me just double check on my phone. I'm just, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, got about 10 minutes, and then I'm going to go to a hockey game here in Vegas for the first time in forever. Super excited about that. Who, who was the other person at the, at, who spoke at, at the South by Southwest thing? Do you remember? Like, I remember it was somebody and they were like super nice to include me because they didn't have to. It was like their panel and they just asked if I wanted to join them. Really can't remember who that was. That was fun. Then I applied the next year and they rejected me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, did, uh, I did one cruise over there. It was super fun. Uh, Estonia had a really good tea place that I liked. Uh, I've been to Sweden. I, I like Stockholm a lot. Um, uh, Norway is okay. I really wanted to go to Finland, and then there's too much wind. They wouldn't dock. I even had a friend I met on a cruise that I was gonna. He was gonna like show me around. We had this whole plan, uh, so that was kind of a bummer. Um, yeah, I, I like that cruise, but the thing is, I don't like that many ports because I just like being on the ship. So I do Trans-Pacific, Transatlantic. So I'm hoping to do the Transatlantic coming up soon. Um, yeah. How many sticks do you die when your friends visit? Uh, my wife does not, she has her own thing. Uh, we, we eat almost no meals together, which I think, which people find like horrifying, uh, but I don't know, it works, works for us. I would say, so she eats lunch. I don't think she eats breakfast anymore. Um, and then I'd say five to six nights a week, she, uh, she's Chinese and she cooks Chinese food. So she eats her Chinese food. I eat my Chipotle and then probably once or twice a week we go out or order in or something like that. Um, when my friends are here, I don't stick to it though because I want them to try all the awesome Vegas restaurants. So I, I just kind of, we, we do something totally different. I, I have two modes. I have like when I'm alone mode and then when I have friends mode. Yeah. What is something that's outside your comfort zone? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I mean, I, I think there's not that much and part and, and like I feel like that's like a lame like what's your biggest weakness? It's that I have it's you know that I am too kind or something. Um, but I think I just spent so many years through gambling and pickup training myself to be uncomfortable, or training myself to be comfort comfortable in uncomfortable uh, situations. Sorry, that I feel like I do okay with those. Um, I think if you were gonna like throw me back into pickup these days, that would that would definitely be outside my comfort zone to some extent. Hopefully I'd get back into it quickly, but who knows? Um, uh, what would be another something? I'm not, not really sure. Um, yeah, maybe that's something I think about though, is, is maybe it'd be cool to do something outside my comfort zone, trying to push that and, and figure out what it, would, what it would be. I think maybe like starting a business and taking VC money and like hiring people. I don't know if that's outside my comfort zone or if I just don't want to do it. Maybe it's the same thing, but that, that would probably be. Um, if you're going to take a year off from work with enough cash saved, where would you go, do, or learn? Uh, it just depends so much. I mean, I feel like that's my whole life at this point. But um, yeah, it really depends what your situation is. Um, I would try, you know, traveling is, is a good, you know, go to, go to Tokyo, go to Budapest, stuff like that would be a good option. I feel like I learned a lot of like um, sort of intangible things in traveling that have really helped me a lot. Probably also somebody was asking earlier about staying grounded. I think that probably helped a lot because you just see a lot of other situations. Um, and you see also that people have like different values than you and different goals and it kind of puts everything in perspective. So that can be good. I know. You know what the problem is, is that I don't use Discord. And so I feel like if I make this thing, like I don't know how to maintain it. I don't know like what it even is really. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I want to make a forum, but I feel like don't people don't use forums. Maybe a Facebook group, but I feel like a lot of people don't like Facebook. I don't know. I should just make a decision and do it. 
buying a studio apartment in Budapest is an excellent idea. Uh, yeah, you only pay 4% transfer tax and you don't pay tax anymore. It's like you really own it. Um, yeah, and, and they're, they're really inexpensive. Uh, and it's just such a good experience. Like get one in the sixth district or the seventh district if you can. Um, I would really, I think Budapest is such a walkable city that I would really optimize for being, you know, there's sort of like the fifth district is like, which direction? Oh, it's, it's mirrored for me, so it's hard to see. Anyway, there's so the fifth district like this, anything that's along the non-river side of it, the edge is sort of where I would be looking. Um, or up Andrashi Ave, um, even a little further away, there's such a, you know, there's a good train line that goes there and it's such a beautiful street that uh, you can get a little less expensive if you go further up Andrashi and you can consider that. Um, but I think it's a great idea. I love our place in Budapest. We've had so many problems, like it was flooding and all this, like we had like these contractors to redo it and they just kind of like left when they were like 95% done and still super, super sucked. Top reasons for living in Las Vegas. Uh, I wrote a whole blog post about it two weeks ago, so you should read that. You may not have gotten notifications because apparently they're a little bit messed up. Um, but highest quality of life anywhere. I think that like, forget about money, forget about quali qualifiers, highest quality of life anywhere. And then, and, and that's sort of including the factor of it's the least friction. So like, there are more things to do in New York or LA, for example, than Vegas, I think, or, or similar, probably more. And yeah, there's probably more things. But the friction of doing them means that you don't do them as often. Whereas in Vegas, it's like, look, you know, I'm doing this show, it's 11.15 here, and I have to be sitting in seats at the arena to watch a hockey game at noon, and I'm not stressed about it. I can go on for a few, you know, another five more minutes and then get ready and go. So it's just so easy to do so many things here. Uh, and then it's also very, very inexpensive, which is great. So. Uh, yeah, check out the post. I wrote a lot about it. And then actually, if you check out uh, a few weeks ago when Noah was here, uh, this girl that he kind of went on a date on a date with on, our, on the show, she also talked about why she likes living in Vegas. And it was pretty funny because it was all like the same kind of things. I, I thought about that doing a Jiao Zhou meetup. Uh, when I did my live event in, in Budapest, I rented out Jiao Zhou and had a custom breakfast brought there. Uh, it was super, super fun. So I'm definitely going to do that again sometime too. Oh, let's see. Uh, first piece of wool clothing, just get a t-shirt. I think they're the cheapest and you know, you can wear it every single day. Um, yeah, totally worth it. Yeah, I, I like doing meet meetups. I've done some before. Um, I think what, what, what kind of stops me from doing it these days, or I shouldn't say these days because I haven't traveled in so long, but uh, before COVID, I would travel and I'd be like in different places for only three or four days at once. And it sort of like takes up a day if I'm really going to do it, you know. Um, so I really do enjoy doing it, but it's like, oh, if I'm only here for three days, do I really want to like have one day be a meetup? Um, anyway, maybe it's a lame excuse. We'll see. Um, I tried your tactic for writing a book, ended up doing one hour a day for eight days, found my brain was fried by the end. Do you notice my brain fatigue after writing a lot very quickly? Uh, you know, honestly, look, I've, I've been writing for 15, 16 years now, so I think maybe more in the beginning I would experience that, but uh, maybe less less now, just because I just because it's like the one thing I do really, really consistently. All right, guys, one more question, then I'm out of here. I, I always enjoy doing this so much that by, by the time it's ending, I don't want it to end. Um, but got to go, get ready, a few more minutes. All right, maybe no more questions. Oh, let's see, there we go. Mostly look, uh, yes, you should say hi in the beginning. I, like to, I just like seeing who, who's here, even if uh, it's fun seeing the same people come back. I feel like that's why I do it mostly. It's just fun to see the, the same people over and over again. Um, any ideas in up, up and coming neighborhoods in Vegas? I mean, like everywhere is an up and coming neighborhood in Vegas is the thing. And, and I think they're all sort of on that like point of the curve where they are, uh, they're good enough that you realize they're gonna get great, but they're not like, that's not priced in yet. Unless you're in Summerlin and Henderson, which are already, you know, max price or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'd say anything closer to the strip, I, you know, you could sort of go in the strip to the west, to the east, north, 
downtown area, even south, kind of like near the airport, there's some good good spots. Um, I think if you live in one of those places, they're maybe not as polished as like Summerlin or Henderson, but uh, they everything's so so convenient that it's really nice. That's where I live. Um, all right, guys. So good to see everybody. Thank you so much for showing up. You really make my Sundays. I end up looking forward to it, probably starting Friday. I, uh, I really look forward to getting to do this. So thanks for showing up. For people watching this after the fact, if you really made it to the end, that's amazing. Please join us live. Um, it's probably going to be a few weeks before I can do another one. Actually, it might really even be a month. Um, so we'll see. Or maybe I'll do it on a Saturday. Oh, no, no. I'm going to do next week. Sorry. Is that right? Next week, I got you guys. For sure, next week, Sunday at 10. Then it'll be a few weeks before I can do another one after that. All right, guys. See you. Thank you for joining.